So far in our discussion on enzymes, we focused on the kinetics of enzymes, and then we discussed the mechanisms that enzymes actually use to catalyze the different types of biochemical reactions and processes that take place inside our body. The next question is, the next topic we're going to basically study is enzyme regulation. So, how exactly do the cells inside our body actually monitor, regulate, and control the activity and the functionality of all the different types of enzymes? So as we'll discuss in this lecture, there are five major mechanisms of control. One is called allosteric control, and we actually spoke about this in detail when we discussed the hemoglobin molecule. The second type of mechanism of regulation is reversible covalent modification. The third type is known as proteolytic cleavage or proteolytic activation. The fourth control method is enzyme concentration, so actually regulating how much enzyme we produce inside the cell. And finally, something called isoenzyme or isozymes. So let's begin by focusing on allosteric control. So many of the enzymes produced inside our cells actually contain these regions, these sites we call allosteric sites. And these allosteric sites are different than the active sites found on the enzyme that binds onto the substrate molecule. So we have special types of signal molecules, regulation molecules found inside our body that can bind onto these allosteric sites found on allosteric enzymes, and by binding, they can, t uh, they can create some type of change, and that can actually alter the activity, the functionality of the enzyme. Now, allosteric enzymes and allosteric proteins basically observe something called cooperativity, and we spoke about cooperativity in detail when we discussed hemoglobin. So, we basically said that an allosteric protein or an allosteric enzyme will observe, uh, will observe cooperativity, and what that means is the binding of a molecule onto a side on that enzyme or protein will affect the affinity of the other sides for that same molecule. And again, we focused on this when we discussed hemoglobin. Now, the, the enzyme that we're going to focus on in the next several lectures that basically is controlled allosterically is aspartate transcarbamylase. And we'll see exactly how this is done in the next several lectures. Now, let's move on to the second regulation mechanism, reversible covalent modification. So, the activity of many enzymes is basically controlled and regulated by creating some type of covalent bond, some type of covalent modification on that particular enzyme. And the most common type of modification that we create is the addition of a phosphoryl group by using an ATP molecule. So one example of covalent modification is the attachment of a phosphoryl group onto the enzyme. And as we discussed previously, when we discussed the kinase molecule, so NMP kinase, inside our body we have many different types of protein kinases, which are used to basically catalyze the transfer of a phosphoryl group from our ATP molecule onto that particular enzyme. And by transferring that phosphoryl group, that can basically activate or inactivate the activity of that enzyme. Now, the reverse process, the removal of that phosphoryl group from that enzyme is catalyzed by a different, by a different enzyme known as protein phosphatase. And we'll discuss this protein in much more detail in a future lecture. So we essentially have the enzyme and the ATP molecule. We use protein kinase to transfer a single phosphoryl from this ATP onto the enzyme to produce this complex here. And this can either activate or usually inactivate the activity of that enzyme. And we also produce that ADP molecule. And if we want to go in reverse, if we want to remove that P and add that P onto that ADP to reform the ATP and that active enzyme, or in some cases inactive enzyme, we use protein phosphatase. And we'll discuss these proteins in detail in future lectures. Now, the third mechanism of control is proteolytic activation or proteolytic cleavage.
Now, many enzymes produced by the cells of our body are produced in their inactive form. So, the precursor inactive form of an enzyme is called a zymogen or sometimes a proenzyme. Now, in order to activate these zymogens, these proenzymes, special molecules called proteases, which we spoke about previously, are basically used to cleave at special sites, and that is what activates these polypeptides, these zymogens. And once activated, they can basically carry out their functionality until they are inhibited by some type of inhibitor, usually an irreversible inhibitor. And two examples of groups of enzymes which utilize this type of regulation method are digestive enzymes such as chymotrypsin, trypsin, as well as pepsin, as well as all the different types of enzymes involved in a blood clotting cascade. And we'll discuss this in detail in future lectures. So we have the zymogen that the cell produces, that's the inactive enzyme, the proenzyme, and then some type of protease cleaves the zymogen at some specific location, let's suppose at this position here, and that creates the active form of the enzyme. So this piece is the active form, and then this itself can be inhibited by using some type of irreversible inhibitor that binds onto, the, onto some site found on that active form, and that inhibits the activity of that enzyme. Now, the fourth type of mechanism of regulation is actually regulating the amount of the enzyme that is present in the cell. And usually, as we'll discuss eventually, this type of regulation is monitored on the level of transcription. So, if we control the amount of transcription that takes place on a particular gene of interest that codes for some type of enzyme, we can ultimately control how much of that enzyme is produced inside that cell and in turn control the activity and the functionality level of that particular enzyme. Now, the final regulation method is basically something called an isoenzyme or an isozyme. So, what exactly is an isoenzyme? Well, an isoenzyme or isoenzymes, to be more correct, are these enzymes that differ in their sequence of amino acids and so they differ in the structure, their three-dimensional structure, but they are actually used to carry out the same type of reaction. So isoenzymes are basically multiple forms of the same type of enzyme that carries out the same type of function. So isoenzymes are enzymes that differ in their, amino, uh, in their amino acid sequence and three dimensional structure, but, with, but which catalyze the same type of reaction inside our body. So these enzymes allow for the fine tuning of many metabolic processes. Now isoenzymes are usually not only different in their three-dimensional structure and their amino acid sequence, but they can also differ in the enzyme kinetics that they basically exhibit. So uh, things like the Vmax, the maximum velocity of the enzyme, as well as the Km value, the Michaelis constant, these things can basically differ depending on which isoenzyme we're actually looking at. And on top of that, these isoenzymes are usually controlled by different types of regulatory molecules. Now, one example of an isoenzyme found inside our body is lactate dehydrogenase, LDH. And this is basically the molecule that, that is used in the process of anaerobic cellular respiration. So, we have two types of isoenzymes for lactate dehydrogenase. One of them is found predominantly in the cardiac muscle cell, and the other one is found in the skeletal muscle cell. And we'll discuss what their function is and what their difference is in more detail in the next several lectures. So these are the five different types of methods by which our cells can regulate the activity and the functionality of all the different types of enzymes that exist inside our body.